is coming to you. Again, good evening, everyone. Good evening. At this time, I'd like to call this <coughs> meeting of the Hinckley Township Board of Trustees to order on Tuesday, March 7 at 6.30 p.m. And the roll call, Augustine? Here. Asheville? Here. Swedek here. Also, Chief of Police, Chief of Fire, and the Service Superintendent, and a nice group of folks in the crowd. Martha has an excused absence. Martha will not be here this evening, and six people virtually. Let's see, one, two, four, six, eight. There are only three virtually that are not ours. 11 people, 11 public. Okay, at this time, I'd like to ask everyone to stand and honor the flag. I'd like to see the flag. Of the United States of America, America and then to the Republic, Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Right. Well, I'll see you in the door. Uh, first, we will uh, address the minutes. I sent my corrections to both of you and to Martha. Well, first I will entertain a motion to approve the special meeting minutes of February 7, 2023. Do I have a motion? February 7, 2023. At February 27. I thought that's what I said, February 27, 2023. Okay. Um, I just wanted to add yeah. the line that was sent to you both and to Martha Catherwood um, and noted that attorney Schrader questioned the board as to why Brunswick would petition to annex Hinckley at which time Ms. Augustine explained the property owner makes, made the request for annexation, not the municipality. I don't know that that's pertinent to the conversation. I think that, it is. I think it is pertinent to the conversation. That's why I'm incorporating it. I think my my opinion is the meeting minutes have gotten out of hand with all of the edits to them. The meeting minutes are supposed to serve as an accounting of the decisions and the rationale that was used to get to those decisions by the decision-making body. I think that they're a transcription of the meeting. They're not a transcription of the meeting and anyone who wants to see exactly what was said, we have YouTube available. So anyone can view any of our meetings. I think that the edits have gotten completely out of hand. I'd like to enter my edits into the record. I think it's important to note that the attorney was not aware of this, how the annexation process went. I don't know that or that he wasn't aware of who filed the petition. Maybe not, but I think it should be noted for our public. I think that's why they're on YouTube. I don't care about this one. It it makes no sense to me to add it, but I don't care. So if you'd like to make a motion, I'll entertain a motion. Anyone? I'd like to make a motion to approve the trustee special meeting of February 27th, 2023 as amended. Second. Moved by Augustine, second by Swedek. Augustine? Yes. Swedek, yes. Nashville. Yes. Approved. Okay, well, 
instead of a motion, let's talk about what you want here. Um, this is the regular trustee meeting of February 21, 2023. Correct. The first order of business is it has a start time of 6 p.m. when it is 6.30 start time. Okay. On page two, and this was something that was even reported in, in the paper, um, under trustees, one, two, three, four, five paragraphs down, after she stated that she was contacted by a resident who provided the reference for the consulting for firm I had entered, she offered that the fire department has received about $300,000 in grant funding by working with entities that are familiar in writing grants. I don't think that needs to be in there. I, I don't think that this needs to be verbatim. Do you feel so. that every one of the things that I have added to the this minutes that I sent to you is of, not of value? Um, with the uh, with the exception of the start time, which I don't know if that's accurate or not, I would have to take your word for it. Oh, it said six thirty. Is that I don't see the edits. I just see I didn't it highlighted in yellow. One. I didn't edit it. I just added a highlight to it, so I wouldn't forget to mention it. Okay. Other than that, I don't think it is necessary. That's fine. I don't want to. Again, it's not a transcription. I don't want to tax the person doing this, and then keep. Oh, you didn't write down every word I said. I don't know that that. Again, so the fire department got some grants by working with entities. What does that have to do with looking at this particular individual? I, I, I know that we talked about it, but that's fine. It's part of the discussion. Discussion ensued. I said that's fine. Okay. Next. So at this time, I'd like to make a motion to approve the regular trustee meeting for February 21st, 2023 as amended. The amendment being the start the time? 6.30 p.m. start time, yes, sir. Very good. No second? Second. Second by Asheville. All in favor? Aye. 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 And we have a special guest this evening. Yes, I have Jennifer here. As you both recall, I gave you the consultant information for water infrastructure grant funding. Um, that was presented to me through a resident who read our monthly newsletter and Jennifer um, met with me with the resident and she is here on behalf of the consulting firm just to offer some more information in doing our due diligence and answering any questions the trustees might have. Welcome. Thank you for being here, Jennifer. Thanks. Thanks for um, putting me on the agenda. I, I really love the opportunity to be able to talk about funding. Um, I did put in front of all of you some information about the firm that I work for. Um, CT consultants, we are, we just hit 100 years old in 2022. We are an engineering, architectural, and planning organization, um, which um, I feel that we have a niche with municipal government. That's how we got our start. We were the municipal engineer um, for communities that didn't have full time engineering staff. Um, <clears throat> I oversee the project development department at CT which essentially means we, we do capital planning, we help with grant writing, we help with project development, we help with grant management, we also do loan preparation, I also do um, economic development. Um, uh, previous to working at CT, I've been with CT eight years, I also was in municipal administration myself. Um, I was an assistant city manager for a community up in Asheville County for close to 11 years. Um, and I have family that are retired police officers and a current administrator in a township. We live and breathe municipal government. Um, and um, what I get to do is I really love my job where I get to help leverage outside funding for communities to do impactful projects. So um, it was through the newsletter that I understand um, my staff member reached out to me, um, recognizing that there is an interest in, in grant writing. And so in order for me to prepare for these meetings, I really try to understand a little bit about the community. Um, I look at uh, meeting minutes, I look at comprehensive plan before I go in so I can understand what the need might be. Um, and I always come armed with a document that's a comprehensive list of funding sources from, you know, litter prevention to bridge replacements, quality of life projects, you name it, because I really don't know 
um, until we really start getting into the weeds, what may keep a community up at night as far as what type of um, development or capital projects or infrastructure needs you may have. Um, in that conversation, I understood that um, there was a, a desire to help the central business district. And so um, that's near and dear to me. You can see right on my uh, folder I have, you know, think local. I'm, I'm all about trying to help support local businesses. I think that's um, all about your community culture. And so um, um, I also am a talent leader for the Northeast Ohio Water Group, which is at CT. So I have um, a lot of experience with utilities um, and then understanding the different funding agencies that are out there. Specifically, we know the number one funder for infrastructure in Ohio is Ohio Public Works Commission. Um, the one behind that with infrastructure is Ohio EPA. And so they actually have their own separate um, state revolving loan program. Um, it's been in um, inception for many, many years, starting with wastewater and then later with water. And then um, subsequently, right after that, they do stormwater. Um, and there is a process in which to apply to this funding source. What is unique is that the new infrastructure bill has um, really offered an opportunity for Ohio EPA to have um, more money than they've ever had before as far as um, doing utility improvements. So you probably have been hearing a lot of funding out there for lead service line replacements, um, PFAS removals, and water quality. And so um, what I had proposed in the um, submittal was a strategy that looked at, um, we know, um, it's my understanding the county engineer has already drafted an estimate. So you have that, which is fantastic. Um, we know that um, any type of extension is considered new. So um, it may not rank as high on the Ohio Public Works Commission because they usually love replacement and repair projects and not necessarily new. Um, uh, when you strategize with submitting nominations to Ohio EPA, it gets your project onto what's called a program management plan. EPA will tell you that when you get your project onto the program management plan, they are the gateway to other funding sources. Um, so you may be familiar with the governor's H2 Ohio program. Um, this was initiated uh, and you saw a lot of money going towards um, harmful algal blooms out of Lake Erie. It was concentrated a lot on the Western side. Then you started to see wetlands improvements. But what we also saw with that money, a portion of it went to the Department of EPA was water quality, um, you know, septic system replacements and um, utility expansions. And so, but, but the thing that's interesting to know is that you cannot go online and find an application for any of those dollars because they were picking them off the program management plan. And the one last thing why I coupled these two together is that um, we are now on our third round of congressionally directed spending money. Um, people might uh, refer to it as earmarks, as pork. Um, for a long time, there was no ability to access money this route. And this is specifically from your congressional representative and your senators. And so um, what's interesting about this funding source is that it includes everything from historic rehab to highway to utility, um, forestry, community facilities, you name it. Um, and it's one of the easier applications to apply to. It's two pages. And it's really essentially asking your congressional rep if they would sponsor your project. Um, and the reason why I bring this up is that one of the qualifiers for a water project is, are you on the state's program management plan, which is the Iowa EPA's state revolving loan program. A little winded there, but um, I work in funding day in and day out, and, and I think that is a good approach. Um, I have worked with communities that are attempting to do regionalization um, for a variety of projects, and, and I think um, this is a beneficial route or an opportunity to explore um, funding opportunities um, for water extension in the area. So um, questions before I go further? You bet it. I just, did I hear correctly? Did you say the loan? Yeah, so normally um, Ohio EPA has a re state revolving loan program. Um, by law, they cannot give out grants. So they use the terminology principal forgiveness. So what they do is you, you submit a loan application. It goes before the, their loan board, which is OWDA. I almost said controlling board, completely different agency. 
And then what they do is then they offer principal forgiveness. So I actually have a sample. Um, I overprepare. I have a sample of the program management plan that was created for water last year. And, and you could see all the projects and you can see which ones were ranked, which ones got zero interest loans, which ones got principal forgiveness. Normally, because it's a utility, um, a lot of the funding agencies recognize that there is a mechanism to fund utility work. And so that is where it got started. It offered loans, but right now they're targeting funding towards specific areas. Um, it's not uncommon to, to hear from Ohio EPA that they're really stressing regionalization um, of projects and also water quality. And so um, when I had this conversation, it reminded me of another community where um, you know, we helped with the research and development of a general plan document, and it actually was the number one ranked project in 2020 for principal forgiveness. They max out how much you can get, and they won't cover 100% of your project. It's usually 50%. Um, and I can offer you recommendations or references to that community. It was New Franklin, where they extended water into that community, and it was based on the fact that they had um, multiple municipalities. I think in my notes, it said there were 54 notices of violation over 10 years. And these are all entities that are considered public water systems, but they're not a municipal water system. So it's a storefront that actually has, uh, you know, whether it's restaurant or retail, they're considered public as a definition with Ohio EPA. Um, we were able to do that research and um, do the nomination to Ohio EPA. And um, I'm pretty happy and proud of the fact that they were able to secure the money and they are now in the process of extending water out to New Franklin. Um, so just for clarification, and this is my understanding, the Ohio Works Loan really opens the door to need-based grants. Yeah, Ohio Public Works Commission is a grant and a loan entity. And we always, what typically our strategy is, is get projects nominated onto the revolving loan program at the project cost that we know that it is. And then um, once it's nominated and it's in a written document, then we go and we pursue all these other funding sources. And we show that we already have a commitment from another funding agency. So Ohio Public Works Commission would recognize that as outside funding and you get extra points for that. If you actually have a collaboration with another municipality, you get extra points for that. Um, and so the whole goal is, is how much money can we get in grants before you ever have to look at or use the loan? And when you nominate your project, it's, um, it, it is just a nomination. You are not submitting any loan document, uh, documentation at that time. And if you decide that you don't need the loan anymore, or hey, we only need half the amount that we requested, that's that's fine. They're not an organization that is punitive, um, such as we do know other funding agencies. If you submit a grant application and then you can't fulfill it, and then you decide you're not going to go forward with it, then they're going to actually dock you points the next time you apply. Ohio EPA does not do that. As a matter of fact, I have communities that we have renominated projects, but for the, the reason is, is they want to try to maximize as much in grant funding as possible. And so, um, and we know it's cyclical. Lots of times it's every 12 months that you get into that cycle. And so for a variety of reasons or the competitiveness that um, if they don't get it the first round, they'll go back a second round, it's, it's worth it. So. So not everyone gets the principal, forgive them. Oh no, it's extremely competitive. And when do you find out if you get it or not after you've already started the loan? Oh, no, no. You, Once you're committed? No, no, no. You, um, you, so what happens is uh, the agency actually has to do a, couple, a public comment period. When they submit all of those requests in to the program management plan, they publish a draft plan. So this is an opportunity for people to review it and make corrections. Oftentimes, um, they, they see a lot of nominations and so not everything's in there. So that's an opportunity to go in there. I mean, I know I've haggled over the fact that we were committed an interest rate at a very lower rate and um, I got it in an email and they realized they made a mistake and they go change it. But after that's typically a 30 day process. I do know last year because the new infrastructure money, it caused them to delay getting that nomination document out the door during their normal cycle. So typically March is when you are submitting for water projects. Um, August is when you submit for wastewater and stormwater projects. And let me explain the reason why those that timing is very important. 
It is the only time of the year that Ohio EPA will accept construction project nominations. It's because what they do is they combine all of those requests into one, they tally up the dollar amount, then they go with Ohio Water Development Authority and they bond the entire thing. Um, and so, as you can see, it can't be on a quarterly cycle when you're doing something like that. Um, I have a lot of communities that think it's a competitive process to actually get a loan, and in other states it is, but Ohio it's not. Um, and um, most of the time, the, 99% of the time, I've not had any communities that were turned down for a loan. The only way you get turned down is if you cannot show that you can retire the debt. And so oftentimes before they say no, they want to find out if the community is looking to do a utility rate um, increase. And typically that's what solves it. And then they get the loan. Um, it, all of that is, if you go to Ohio EPA's, it, it's DEFA is the acronym. It's their um, Department of Environmental Financial Administration. And um, the best thing that happened is the fact that um, it wasn't that long ago that they've opened it up for stormwater improvements, which we have always found to be very hard to find money for flooding and culvert replacement and um, infrastructure of that nature. It used to be that you could submit a nomination uh, for wastewater if, if uh, stormwater was ancillary to it, it was allowed, but it was never a primary project. Um, and they've, they realize that stormwater is in, incredibly important for the communities and looking for a funding source. So I rambled, but um, I've got copies of the nomination document. At, at the downside, there's, because I, I have to, there's the criteria for the loan forgiveness, there has to be needs based in there at some point, I'm assuming, correct? Or? So, so there, and it's, in, it's published in their actual program management plan, how they rank you. And so they actually change their methodology on how they're, they're divvying out those dollars, whether it's a 0% loan or low interest loan or principal forgiveness. And so what they're looking at is um, population loss. They're looking at median household income. They're looking at unemployment. And they're also looking at affordability, you know, the cost um, they will look at all of your utility costs, um, whether there's a stormwater fee, utility fees, they look at the affordability of it. And so that's how they're making determinations. Um, it's not always- On that criteria, I'm thinking we, we got a tough road to go. So we do the loan and we may have to pay it back. And in order to pay it back, one of the things we're gonna look at is how we're gonna do that. So we're looking at an assessment, correct? Um, you, you would. It's not, it's not a utility increase, so you have to be something in there. I, I, my thought process is, is um, I would work with Ohio Public Works Commission with a collaborative application. And I don't necessarily know if it would be the township that would be making the final request to DEFA. It could be a collaborative with the uh, utility owner itself, which is the county. They technically have the utility rate structure in place and would um, be the logical entity. But that is all based on and an assessment. And the yep. goal is to not pay a loan. It's to open up the doors to grants by just applying for the loan. It, it would be. And I, I don't want to kid you. You're never going to get 100% of a project funded. It, it's just, it, it, it's rare that you get it and you have to really be, um, uh, even in very distressed Appalachia, you still see that there's a commitment of local funds. And so um, the other thing I wanted to also recognize as a qualifier, and I have brought other documents so you can see it, uh, and or it's available online, it's a public document. They also look at um, health issues. Um, um, and so they get very specific into, is it cyanotoxins and you know presence of PFAS, how they rank the priority structure. And without having done that research and, and recognize if there's any NOVs or any health concerns currently, it's hard for me to tell you how you're gonna rank until we start to evaluate that. I mean, we didn't realize um, the example that I gave you before that there had been 54 um, NOVs to those public systems um, until we actually went in and started to do the research. EPA, um, a lot of their documents are public documents. It's just a matter of doing that research to put the listing of the organization's name and community and just start digging. 
I mean, in that case, this community also had a gas line that had caused some concerns about well issues. And so that complicated it. And at the same time, there was a um, childcare facility that had a presence of PFAS in their water system, all out of their well, which all compelled the reason why they needed to be on a municipal system. So I, I, I recognize a downside is the, the recognition that there is debt, there could be debt, and how do you pay for that? The, the thought is, is the what I put together for you in that proposal was a grant application submittal and a nomination to DEFA. Um, and recognizing the congressional earmark request is a two-page document. It's, it's a very simple submittal. It's more like testing the waters to see what opportunities are out there and the potential to secure funding. You're not making any commitment that you are moving forward with the project until you get the results of those applications and the ranking. And so the fee for those services is $8,500. Yes. A lot to digest, I understand. <laughs> um, We're up against a time constraint if you're saying that March is the time to... So, so uh, in my proposal, I drafted that March 3rd was the deadline for construction nominations. That was Friday. Um, they, they allow you to submit, um, they offer planning loans, design loans, and construction loans. Planning and design loans can be submitted at any time. They have a five-year term, a 0% interest rate. Um, what we often do with communities is their planning and design loans get rolled into the construction loan. So it's, it is one loan. Um, and if they were able to secure principal forgiveness, it, it is tied to the awarded funding. So just to give you an example, we had a village looking to regionalize their water system. They found that um, it was very costly for them, them to maintain a treatment facility. They had a couple of NOVs with Ohio EPA. Um, they did a request for proposals for water purveyors, and they're now working with their community that's to the south of them. Um, this community um, uh, started off with a planning loan to just understand the hydraulic, how is this going to work? Um, you know, uh, what projects need to happen in order to regionalize? And so that was all done under a planning loan. That planning loan has since, um, is in the process of being rolled into a construction loan. They were in this year's program management plan, one of the number one projects ranked for, in this case, they are considered um, disadvantaged, but they were qualified also as regionalization. Um, and that project um, ultimately received half of their cost in principal forgiveness. And so their loan is gonna be at a 0%, whatever the balance is left. And of course, we're in the process of applying for a lot of other funding sources to um, reduce that cost down. Um, so, so we're not disadvantaged, so we know that. Yep, I understand that. So we're looking at a loan, no guarantee of principal forgiveness. And if there is principal forgiveness, it's not likely to even be half. I would think that. Does the, the other piece of information come into play that the county doesn't have this in their plan, not even in their 20-year plan? So they've deemed it already that it's much lower on a priority list. I do know that we've done work with Medina County. Um, we have done engineering work. Um, I, my contact at CT had contacted the county engineer specifically about this, um, and they were willing to participate in an OPWC application with you. A lot. Uh, Ohio Public Works Commission is a grant or a loan entity. So you can go in and ask all grant. I don't know if I would recommend that. Typically strategy is, is you're asking for a combination of grant and loan and or use your local funds um, to, to show a percentage of match to, to be competitive. And, and so it's not all loan. The goal is, is how can we maximize um, a strategy to try to get as much um, recognition under Ohio Public Works Commission to capture that grant. And although so, we may not be disadvantaged, the water quality may be so poor that we are at a, a higher priority. Yeah, health and safety is, um, if you look at the methodology, they do look at that. Um, they, they would look at a utility project before they look at a stormwater project. Like, for example, we always struggle with trying to get water towers replaced. They typically... Well, the, the, 
you need to understand that the project we're talking about comes in and only serves a limited number of units. It doesn't spread throughout the township. The project that they're currently looking at comes into the center of town. That is it. Correct. And how is it audited that, I mean, someone can say their water quality is very poor, but at the end of the day, it can be tested and it can be said, it's fine. You may not like it, but it's fine. So when I say audit, when we did the evaluation for the previous project that I explained was um, what we did is we ended up getting the notices of violation that EPA had issued to that entity. And then um, we also had dialogue with those businesses. They, in fact, actually all wrote letters of support asking to get the public water systems um, routed to them. Um, just for the simple fact of their cost of doing business, it was, it was better for them. And we've had similar stories here in Hinckley Township where the church, for instance, just emailed me that they wish they could have their preschool again, but the water quality is not good enough. The county um, health department won't allow it. Um, you know, we've got um, Hoppy Dews Brewery who will be moving to Medina because they can't brew here with the water quality as it is. Um, spoken to many business owners, Foster's is interested in water. Um, residents who live close to town center are saying that they have to turn their toilets off and fill buckets to wash their dishes because the water pressure isn't what it should be. So we definitely have a need and I'm starting to hear from some folks in Hinkley Township. I know this is just for town center, but if we look at even the cost analysis of having our engine or our tanker go up to Skyland to fill up, you know, all the time versus coming to town center. Uh, we look at ISO points. There's so many different variables that would benefit town center. And I think the reason that I'm going after this and having these conversations is because I'm hearing these stories of need and that our comprehensive plan directs us to do this. And our comprehensive plan audit showed that almost 60% of, of the people who took the survey wanted to see water in town center. So um, I'm just doing my due diligence. I think there's also a difference which I assume would be looked at between a need versus a want. I have also spoken to business owners in town who would like to have water, but they don't need to have water. Um, Foster's specifically has said, if water was run, they would tap into it, but they don't feel it's the township's responsibility to provide it for them. Foster's purchased it knowing it was well water. Happy Dudes moved in to that business knowing that it was well water. Inky Commons moved into that facility knowing that it was well water. There's no secrets here with anything. And I would think that that's gonna be something that weighs on a decision also is, is there a need or, because there's a difference between a need and I want. If my if I can respond, ultimately, I think what you when you find out if there's interest is um, the means in which for this to actually get funded, whatever balance is is remaining, it would be an assessment on the property owners, and that's usually um, when you find out who's committed and who wants to spend the money. Um, that that's when you know, and so there is a formal process to go through an assessment. So it, it's. It's, you know, you have to define that there's a need and that there has to be enough folks that, that want it. So uh, there is a physical process to go through that, that would warrant moving forward. But this is a step in the right direction to see what kind of funding we can garner in yes. the meantime. Yes. I kind of liken it as putting the toe in the water and, and testing it to find out what, what's available and what's out there. Um, it's no secret, the infrastructure bill is a five-year cycle. We already had one year of that cycle, so you have four more. Um, I don't believe the DFA program is ever gonna go away. Um, folks probably don't realize that Ohio Public Works Commission is actually, um, it gets reauthorized. There's what, one more year and it has to go to a vote to get reauthorized again. I don't know how familiar you are with that program, but it's been around for several, several years as issue one funding. So much so that people just assume that the cycle is just gonna be there and not realize that it has to be reauthorized, but it is 
the number one funder of um, projects in the state of Ohio. So um, if not today, there's those opportunities are there. You're wealth of knowledge, Jennifer, thank you. Yeah, the other things that I was looking at also just to throw out is you have um, as a community that would be considered rural, there's also USDA. You know, USDA has their own separate water and sewer program, but USDA has a plethora of other funding sources, especially for rural businesses, whether it's um, energy efficiencies, cooperative opportunities, um, tons of other funding sources. So recognizing to support your downtown businesses, there's other ways um, in addition to, you know, expansion of the utilities as well. So um, can't stress enough that um, USDA has a community facilities program. Most people think of that as a community center, but community facilities are things such as your fire departments. And uh, my community, we went after community facilities to replace our dispatch console. Um, it's something that's eligible. I had another community that was able to replace their fire vehicles. Um, don't mean to ramble, but there is lots of different funding sources out there. It's just a matter of understanding what the priorities are and knowing when the cycle is and then being able to um, always set aside funding for match. Um, it is absolutely most certain that you have match. And most of the time, the grants are reimbursements. So you have to front the money and it could take weeks to get that reimbursement back. But just to keep that in mind. Well, I appreciate the opportunity to um, speak with you about this. And um, you have my card. I would welcome any um, discussion, conversations about this. I'm, I'm passionate about funding and, and um, helping communities. So. Thank you. Thank you for coming out. Thank you very much, Jennifer. Thanks. Chief, would you care to go next? I would. And good evening. And I have nothing for the board this evening. That's impressive. Do we have any um, reports, quarterly reports, or annual reports, or anything from police or fire? Uh, well, March ends the first quarter of this year, so we'll have those when the, the month's up. Okay, because I haven't. I will too. I'll have okay. a quarterly one. Thank you. <clears throat> Perfect. Anything else from the board? Anything in the public for the chief? Chief, you need to go. You're welcome to leave. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a wonderful evening. Have a good one. Thank you. And now, chief. Thank you. Good evening. <coughs> Uh, first is request to move firefighter EMT Brad Polish from cadet pay to his full pay of 1623 an hour, and then firefighter paramedics Jake Bartnelli and Tristan Batani to their full pay of 1854 per hour effective uh, March 19th, which is the next, as Martha's request, the next pay period. So moved. Okay. Moved by Asheville, second by Augustine. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, next is request appropriations not to exceed $800 for two of the officer fire helmets with the leather fronts from fire safety services. This is part of our um, personal protective equipment replacement plan that we uh, we have going on every year. So with the two new lieutenants, the old lieutenants helmets are going out of service. So we'd like to purchase the new ones for them. So moved. Second. Moved by Asheville, second by Augustine, all in favor. Aye. 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 Last is emergency repair for Tanker 32. Um, this was for $1,351.77 through Williams or WW Williams. Uh, we were having pump issue. They had to replace a solenoid and uh, it was very labor intensive for them to get into the pump, including going through the top of the tank, which is about a 22 to 24 inch opening to get in there to work on some of the plumbing as well. Moved. Second. Moved by Asheville, second by Augustine. All in favor? Aye. 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 The only thing I have is there's no blood drive this month with Buzzard Day. Um, we will be having another one in May, or I'm sorry, April. Thank you. That's all I have. Anything from the board for Chief? No, thank no. you. Anything from the public for Chief? 2.0, you're excused. Thank you very much. Good Have a good night, guys. Have a good night. Michael. How's everybody doing tonight? Good. How about you? Oh, not bad. Um, 
I originally didn't have anything for the meeting, um, but our truck finally did come in. So there was a few items that I was going to ask the board for tonight. That way we can keep moving on the outfit so we can get this thing ready to go. Um, it, there's so many items I got to get priced through Chuck's custom. Um, and then we also need to get like an undermount toolbox through TSC. It's going to cost uh, the one we're looking at is probably going to be about 400 bucks, another 100 bucks for some mounting straps. Um, looking to do like a do not exceed between that and trucks for some lighting and stuff like that, like do not exceed $1,000. So just to get this truck outfitted and done and ready to go. So perfect. That's one. So move to purchase toolbox and straps, lighting, accessories. Accessories, yeah. And accessories for the new service department truck. Which one is it? The 750. The F750 and the amount not to exceed $1,000. Second. Moved by Swedek, second by Asheroll. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. A um, couple updates. Uh, finally got quotes for the backhoes through all three companies. Um, as of right now, like between Cat and Case, they're within a couple hundred dollars. I got a zero in on these a little bit more, get them sent over to Brian just for approval. It's all through source well pricing. Um, with our trade in, we'll be right around that 103 to 105 mark. So that's where it's going to be around. Um, looking at the appropriation budget, there's two line items one's 57,000, one's 60. You know, we have to combine those, but to be able to replace that. So um, ours is getting old being in the salt all the time. It's, it's time. Um, you know, I already had talked to this or talked to Martha about it, so she knows. So but that's right around that price range right now until I get this really dialed in on a couple more items. So this just seems like anything to do with government pricing takes a little while. So it kind of is what it is. So just wanted to give the board an update, kind of know where we're at with pricing with that. So perfect. Thank you. Um, but that's about it for me for tonight. So that's it for nothing, huh? <laughs> anything else from the board for? Service, anything from the public for service? Somewhere else to be? Always. Have a good evening. <laughs> you want me to stay for that agreement or are we okay with that? You want to tackle it now? We can, we can touch base real quick. I, um, well, I need to know, I, I think we want to stay with it for, for, uh, for another season. Um, I gave you both a copy of it. It's from Don Cox. It's a 5% increase. It's nominal considering uh, what's out there my concern would be that if we chose to modify it in any way that that pricing is going to adjust on the other pieces so we can either uh, go out for bid again or just uh, move to renew and what's the renew is it a year two three it's for one year okay and how do we feel his work's being done? I haven't seen his work in like the cemeteries and things like that. You would know better than I do. Um, he's doing all right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> and that's your preference, both of you, to renew? That's mine. We, we, we talked internally about possibility of getting a mower and having the guys do some of the stuff to, you know, try and reduce this. But then that, after thinking about it, it takes you away from other things that we could be doing. And like I said, if we take off bits and pieces of this, how does that affect the pricing of the other portion of it? I don't think it's overly uh, expensive at this point. If we were going to go that route, I would say look at doing the, uh, you know, we can put together like what a mower would cost, what it's going to take us for cost for our labor. But then again, that's when I would put it back out for contract. Like if we're going to do that to see what pricing actually came back as mm -hmm. with say like our area of fire and back ball fields taken off. So, but obviously putting that together is going to take some time too. And so the one year actually, what was 5%? Yeah. Increase. 5% is pretty good mm -hmm. nowadays. So 
I mean, cost of fuel has gone up more than that. So, and I agree with you, Jack. I think that these guys have much bigger things to do. They do so much in house to assist our town and save us financially. I would think that this would be a, a big stretch for them with the cemeteries and everything. I'm amenable to move forward with the one year contract with Honey Bee. If that's, the, if that's both of yours preference, it makes perfect sense with how you explained it. So I'm good right. with it. I'll move to uh, extend the contract with Don Cox Honeybee Lawn Care to November 2024. That's a one-year extension with a 5% increase across the board for all services. Second. Moved by Swedek, second by Asheville. All in favor? Aye. 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 Do you want to discuss the Boston Road? Okay. <laughs> Unfortunately for Mike, he's intimately familiar with this. So <laughs> um, we want to do a repair of Boston Road east of Ridge Road. It's the shared boundary road between us and North Royalton. And then we want to, uh, we worked on an agreement between North Royalton and the township went to the prosecutor's office uh, with changes, resubmitted to North Railton and their law office approved it. Mm -hmm. So what I would like to do is move to enter an, into an agreement with the city of North Railton for the repair of Boston Road, east of Ridge Road, that has the boundary line road between Hinkley Township and the city of North Railton with the cost to be shared by both. Second. Moved by Swedek, seconded by Augustine. Augustine? Yes. Asheville? Yes. Swedek, yes. All right, we will write that motion up, have it inserted into this, and then uh, we'll take care of the signatures to get this over to North Rome. Thank you for your work on that. Okay, if you can sign the second one out of your copy too, because we're going to execute two so they can keep one for themselves. If I could so have, you want everybody to sign. Yeah, if I could have three sign. folks come up just to witness the signature, that'd be great. And if I could have those people stay for two cemetery deeds, that would be great. A oh, one cemetery deed. Jeff, are you giving up your role as designated signer? <laughs> you said three, right? Uh, yeah, for the, the, the city one needs three. Um, witnesses on both then. So this is my yes. copy of it. So you need that. And he's going to Martha. Mine. Pardon? And he's going to go to Martha. My copy will go to Martha. No, I get both. Take them, to get Royal, both. Get, take them to Royal and for them to sign both. Okay. Do you need a pen? Okay. I signed two. Is there one more? For you? The Royal was just two. Okay. Did you say there were two cemetery? Well, I, yeah, but I self-corrected. There's just one. I thought oh, there okay. were two in there, but. Too bad. Excellent. Do you want my whole packet or just the signature? Just the signature page. Okay. And you don't need that. No, that's what that's what I was going to say. Okay. Believe, is it not? You can make me look now. You want it just in case? It's for the it's for the prosecutor. Yeah, I'll pick that. Okay. Better safe than sorry, yeah. Better safe. Our motto. Anything else? For me. Just hang around, have fun. Your choice. <laughs> Zoning. <laughs> Very good. 
very quick update on oh, zoning. You're leaving. Have a good night, Mike. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. <laughs> uh, we did do an oath in office for zoning commission alternate Bill Spellman that was completed last Thursday. And so all of our new alternates have been sworn in. Um, wanted to discuss Sunshine Law training. I know there was discussion at a meeting that I missed. Um, I believe it was in January. And I, I honestly don't know what happened in that meeting because I haven't had an opportunity to read through the minutes or watch the video. Um, but I wanted to have conversation with you because when we look at the Ohio revised code, it says that sunshine law training should be done once every term for elected officials. It's not even mandatory of our zoning commission or zoning uh, BZA boards. And so we've got um, alternate um, Engelman who just was appointed, I think like last April and I think finished her sunshine law training roughly six, about June of last year, Cindy. Yes. Perfect, I can't see. Sorry. <laughs> And then we have um, obviously William Spellman who just finished his last year as well. So I didn't know if we wanted to have them repeat it, um, if it's good enough for the term of, a, of an elected, I would imagine that it would may be daunting to have them go through the three hour course again when they've just done it last year. I wanted to get your opinions on it because I may need to send an email with the Sunshine Law training to all of our alternates collectively. I thought we discussed this since that meeting in January because I was originally thinking they don't need to take it every year, but I thought we had agreed for standards that it was going to be how it was written in, is it the organizational mm -hmm. meeting? It was going to be for standards that, so yeah, I was Cindy, that Cindy would take it again as she is now in her first year of a five-year term and Bill would take it because it's a new term as an alternate. I thought that's what we had agreed to for standards. Okay. I just didn't, like I said, I didn't, I wasn't privy to the details of that conversation. So I was coming to you to ask before I emailed all of our alternates because I want to do it collectively. Okay, perfect. I will go ahead and move forward with that. It can be a little daunting, but you're going to be a pro. <laughs> Okay, and do you want me to continue, Chairman, Mr. Chairman? My last little blip here. No cemetery? Uh, we signed the deed, so that's behind us. Okay. Uh, buzzer day is March 19th. Everyone mark your calendars. If you want to volunteer, you can go to the Chamber website. They have the volunteer sign-up genius there. You can also pre-order your tickets for your, your pancakes and sausage. Um, the deadline to nominate for the citizen of the year is March 22nd. And so I'm so, 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 so excited to get all of your nomination letters in my inbox for someone in Hinkley Township that's just done something extraordinary in our town. So please email me or send me a letter, whatever's most convenient for you. Um, was at the Medina County Planning Commission last Wednesday and had a conversation with Denise Testa and our new CRA Housing Council members will be on their agenda for April for approval so we can move forward with that. And um, I spoke with, I emailed with, I should say, Commissioner Harrison. So he is going to be our special speaker for the Memorial Day Parade as of today. Very excited about that. The Memorial Day Parade will be on May 29th at 9 a.m. So get ready for that. Decorate your bikes, your cars. Let me know if you want to be a part of it and participate. And last but not least, I wanted to see if you wanted to have any further conversation about Jennifer's um, presentation today from CT Consultants and see if we wanted to move forward with um, potentially seeing what they might be able to do to, to assist us here in Hinckley Township with water infrastructure grants. I do not have any other questions at this time. Does anyone in the public have any questions? Do you want me to go to the podium? Yes, please. please. Okay. Thank you for coming, by the way. Natasha Kalis, 1809 Ridge Road. I just wanted to clarify a bit about the consulting projects and how that works monetarily. So 
as I was listening to it, um, it is my understanding that say we have a million dollar project that we would like to do is the township's responsibility to have that million dollars available for the project. We would fund that project ahead of time and then hope that we would get about 50% either in grants or loans. Is that the way economically that will work? So if you were looking at the, the EPA's state revolving loan program, the nominated project, um, initially you're submitting a request for a loan application and looking to get ranked for principal forgiveness. So you're asking if you need to have the money up front? Yes. So when it's a grant and you're asking for a reimbursement on a grant, you do have to have the money up front because it's okay. a reimbursement. So what's always a question is, is how long and how fast that reimbursement can happen. Okay. You know, and I would say in, in this day and age, it's a lot faster than it used to be years ago. Jennifer, I don't mean to interrupt you. I'm sorry. Could I have you come up to the podium? Because our fiscal officer who does the minutes is going to be relying on the video sure. to do the minutes. So, and that's how she hears you. All right. So Thanks. if I clarify your question is, yeah. is that do we need to have the money up front? Yes. Yeah. So, right. I mean, technically you don't have the money to do the project. Exactly. Yeah. So, so the goal is, is that we're applying to go after grant dollars with the knowledge that you've submitted a nomination as a um, way to secure a place if you do need a loan. Okay. So when you apply, so let me ask the question, how often are you applying to Ohio Public Works Commission? Because that's an annual submittal. Have you Last done any? We applied, I believe it was 2017 and we got it and 2018 and we got it. Now there may have been years in between that we did apply, but I don't believe that we have. All right, so um, in that particular case, that is a reimbursement process. Okay. So you, you would recognize that you know months in advance that you received that grant. Mm -hmm. um, and then you have time to be able to appropriate those funds knowing that you're getting portion of that project in a grant. A portion so, of that. It, typically, I've not ever, I don't believe Ohio Public Works Commission is 100% ever paid for a project through a Sure, grant. sure. But the township should consider 50% or more or have that amount available to cover at least initial costs is what I'm here. I just want to make sure that I know economically that I'm understanding what I, we have to have ahead of time or the expectations and then even on the back end, the expectations financially. So when you make when you make a, a request for grant dollars, at no time, I mean, you um, have the ability to withdraw. If you, for whatever reason, you know, you're making a commitment with that grant application for a local match. And so I, I don't know if you're the fiscal officer typically. I, I am not the fiscal oh, officer. Oh, okay. Resident. But resident, yeah. Yeah. No, so you actually have Until to submit match dollar for dollar. So no, I don't want you to, you're getting confused yeah. by that. So yeah. when you're submitting a grant application, you're certifying your local funds match. So depending on what funding source you're going after, Ohio Public Works Commission, you can match whatever percentage you want. Okay. Um, some federal sources require that you match at 20%. Okay. So it depends on the funding source that we're applying to. Ohio Public Works Commission, I would want to look at how projects have been ranked in the past as far as have you been successful like doing a grant loan combo, um, how much uh, it all goes into the ranking and how you get scored points. But typically, I see between 25 and 30 percent on Ohio Public Works Commission projects that the community would commit at the local level. So they're just committing. It's not a reimbursement. They're committing to the project. They will if, pay that out of pocket. The, the township would pay 20 to 30% out of pocket. If they if choose. get the seven year 50%, however much we're getting back. Is that what you're If saying? they choose to put that percentage in. Okay. So that is a decision that is made strategically. And so when you look at the methodology and it's published online, you can see how you get more points based on um, it could be a variety of things, as I mentioned before. It could be a collaboration with a county. Um, it could be a collaboration with another municipality. Like I mean, contribute funds too. So um, if the township committed. Just like your North Royalton example, if you are doing a shared project, 
Um, by the way, we are the engineer for North Royalton too, by the way. Um, I, I peeked up when I heard that. That could be a really interesting Ohio Public Works Commission project because you have two entities committing funds. Okay. So depending on what percentage they're deciding to commit, yeah. they could actually go competitively apply and see how much they can get in grant and secure local funds. Okay, so just the township on their own may not be able to secure as much because we don't have maybe the dollars to pledge towards that. But if we were... You're saying like co-partnering with people? I would tell you that um, just because you're a township, I don't necessarily believe that that would hinder your ability to be able to secure funding through Ohio Public Works Commission or through Ohio EPA. Well, I guess my biggest clarification is just like how much, how many dollars do you think the township would need to commit to be competitive to these type of projects? Only because I know that our township's budget is pretty tight. and so where's the money going to come from initially and how are we going to make that happen and what would be the best way economically you know no good it answer does sound like a good we question have to come up with money first and then potentially get reimbursed so what i would tell you is that through my contract and the agreement i would do that evaluation for you okay. i have not done any of that i have not been hired to do that yet um, what i've been able to express is our experience in having helped communities in securing funding especially okay. especially from communities that are considered distressed that have no budget okay. um, i use the example of fairport harbor they are considered disadvantaged and we're still able to secure more than half the funds to do an infrastructure project which is what i would consider to be very successful Okay. And then when you were talking about assessments to cover some of that as well, yep. is that assessments on all the residents in the area or just the residents that are positively affected by this change? So when you're doing a utility assessment, there is a legal process. It's um, in the ORC, so you can look it up. It is those that are benefiting from that improvement. Okay. And so it has to be a direct benefit. Okay. So there are a lot of assessment projects that they're just evaluating a street for improvements. So whether so it's- just those residents would pay for the assessment, yes. the percentage yep. allocation. And they have to agree. I mean, you, ha mm -hmm. you have to have a positive majority number of folks that would agree to be assessed. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have that, then it doesn't yeah. go forward. Okay. And, and like so, an estimated cost probably. Of so you would, you would actually have to demonstrate the need. And so with that, it, there, you would have those physical costs in place. So you would know up front if there's an incredible gap on, mm -hmm. on the funding side. So we have okay. had an experience with communities that um, that is the tool that's available is an assessment. So the goal always is, is if we, I have one community that's looking at a utility expansion. Um, they're on small lots, their, their systems, their septic systems have failed. Um, their parcel size is not big enough to create the new septic system based on the law of today. Mm -hmm. um, they are considered to be a census track that has some distress. And so it was originally analyzed as an assessment project. There's over 206 properties that this would impact. Mm -hmm. um, the whole goal was how can we maximize the amount of grant funding out there so we can reduce the cost to the homeowner? Mm -hmm. I mean, all the way down to, um, I heard you say CRA officer and housing. You know, there are programs out there for those homeowners um, through the community development block grant program to help with those costs if they had to tie in. So, you know, we maximize it, but I, I would I, I can certainly say that we are I can't wave a magic wand and say we're going to find tons of grant funds. Um, we have I can tell you I know tons of different funding sources and we try to maximize the most, mm -hmm. but you will never get 100 percent of an infrastructure uh, project okay. covered. And mind you. Um, as a community, you would have secured ARPA funding. Mm -hmm. And in that first treasury law, um, one of the eligible requirements of that funding, because you understand how important utilities are, is water and sewer, broadband, public services were allowable uses of your ARPA funds. Um, and it wasn't until a year later did they open up the flexibility of using those dollars for roadway improvements. Mm -hmm. um, Obviously, the big one was um, improvements for the pandemic and um, social distancing okay. and then revenue loss because of the economy being down. But ultimately, I guess what I'm hearing is about half of the costs are, are probably going to need to come from somewhere like the township. I mean, it doesn't sound like grants or loans forgivable is going to be 100 percent of the project. So just ballparking how much the township should think. If we're thinking a million, $2 million project, we need half a million or a million dollars reserved 
for that project. Is that accurate or how? I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't actually put a percentage to it. Okay. It's too soon. Sorry, I can't give you that no, answer. Do you have a range? Maybe like a, a fair range of what you would estimate, you know. I gave you the example of the Fairport Harbor being a distressed community and looking to do a regionalization project. And they have secured half their funding from Ohio EPA and principal forgiveness. The balance of the funding they're getting from their land bank for demolition of their water system. Okay. And then they're actually approaching their county to use ARPA funds. So they have okay. re reduced down their 50% based on making those inquiries. So okay. you can go in with a thought process. Okay, 50% is great, right. but I'm one of those. I would rather take the time evaluate all those funding sources, exhaust mm -hmm. those and find out what's available to you. Okay. And that's the benefit of working with a consultant. So we can't put a number on it at this point because we're not, we haven't even started the process. So the last thing I, I do wanna emphasize is the congressional earmark request. If you're not going after OPWC, that probably tells me that you haven't done this as, as well. Our fiscal officer just told me that we've applied pretty much annually, so. For Ohio Public Works Commission? Right. Okay, so the congressional, and I apologize if I made an assumption because I brought it up and it didn't sound like you had remember those a reference, but the congressional earmark request is a whole nother application process and they cover utilities. And so what I want to comment there, those are federal funds and they can cover 80% of your project cost. Um, and those deadlines are now. So I would encourage you, even if you're looking at just the planning side to this, that is just another funding source to look at. And if it's not for this cycle, then it's for the next cycle. And are there other grants for the community? I thought you mentioned like outside of water, but community development, improvements on facilities, things of that nature, because a lot of other things came up in our comprehensive project, like our, our comprehensive review and water was one of them, but there was many other things on there. So can you talk a little bit about the other grants that may be available? Sure. Um, I actually have a, a list <laughs> um, I love that I can, I had provided it to Melissa earlier, oh, okay. um, but I, and you, if you didn't hear, um, I talked about USDA was another one that I would have considered. Okay. Now USDA, I know their funding, I don't want to say they're fickle, but um, annually they may change how their targets are. So for example, I had mentioned that your central business district area could benefit from their community facilities program. And so that is based on, you know, what is the size of your population? They do look at affordability. Um, and, and so um, there are specific funding programs for those business owners to apply for energy um, oh, improvements. So if they're looking at ways that they can um, help with the operational cost of a business, whether it's weatherization, solar, um, those are opportunities um, through that. Now I've, um, have recommended it for a lot of entities that are looking for co-ops, uh, mm -hmm. trying to establish a cooperative. I mean, that's another one that's available. Um, USDA has a variety of funding programs from housing. Mm -hmm. So if you have folks that are um, looking for um, homeowner um, acquisition, um, rehab improvements to houses, oh, um, it, you are considered rural. So there's a whole utility side, there's a housing side, and then they have a business and industry side. So oh, interesting. Through USDA? USDA. Okay. So not just the people who look at meat and, yeah, and inspect meat. But no, I if I had mentioned um, earlier that we had secured money for a dispatch council for mm -hmm. our um, safety forces through USDA. I had another community that replaced their fire vehicle, then they're going to do their actual police fleet through USDA. Okay. A lot of folks don't realize USDA is out there and available. They also have an NRCS program under USDA, which is all about um, land conservation, um, forestry, uh, wetlands, um, big on erosion control. So, I mean, USDA is pretty powerful um, and has funding. And so um, that's just another source for you. Right. Um, and this is like I heard information somewhere we could find. USDA that? is, you can go right yeah, to their website. website. Okay. Yeah. Um, if you typed in grants in USDA, the yeah. whole thing will come up and it's broken out based on state. Okay. So there's actually a field representative that um, they're in different offices in the state of Ohio for USDA. That is just one funding source that I was I was considering for you um, listening to. There's a cemetery grant out there. Mm -hmm. So um, <laughs> heard, I heard lawnmower. It's not a ton of money, but it's the first time that the state actually put together a grant for cemeteries. So 
I, the thing is, it could be a rabbit hole for funding. Uh -huh. um, we didn't even talk about foundation. So, you know, what I, what my forte is, is um, government, you know, county, federal, and state grants, but there's a whole other side of foundation funding that's out there. So typically they're more quality of life, there are trails, playground improvements, um, uh, education awareness on litter and, um, you know, air quality and things of that nature. So um, uh, land banks is another one that's out there. Like I said, I we have a land bank that was um, the state of Ohio last year allocated money to land banks and for brownfield cleanup. And so marrying those projects up with other projects is a way we call it capital stacking of how we actually look at other funding sources to try to leverage as much to a project because we break down all the components of that project. Um, I mean, we have one regionalization project, but within that one regionalization project, there's four different things that are occurring. We're decommissioning a water plant. We're taking down an old water tower. We're putting up a new water tower. We are creating an emergency connection and a secondary interconnection. Mm -hmm. That's all considered one regionalization project, but we're looking at all the different components and what other funding sources that are out there. Okay. So, and, and I will tell you, recognizing that you know, a lot of the money is going to areas that are considered LMI and poverty. Mm -hmm. And um, and a lot of that funding goes to Appalachia, um, all those Appalachia counties that are in Ohio. Um, you're probably aware that there's a whole brand new program that the governor put just to put in areas of distress. So I know you have a tight budget, but when, when you worked with communities that are in distressed Appalachia, they really have no budget. And we are still trying to find ways to help them move forward because they have the same responsibility as well. well Thanks for coming like, tonight. Yeah, Appreciate it sounds it. like there's a lot of great opportunities, not just with water. And so for the trustees, I would like to invite you guys to obviously explore this as a great funding mechanism, but also consider all of the various grants that could impact our community, especially on a wider scale. So I do think that bringing it up for the water was a great starting point, but we should also explore all of the other things that the community would like to see as far as what we responded in our comprehensive plan. So please take that into consideration when you're thinking about this consultant. Sounds like there's great space. I'd love to give this to you. Oh, thank you very much. So I'm wondering if the trustees are willing to move ahead with um, the proposal at $8,500 and hiring CT consultants to start this process and see what um, grant opportunities there are for Hinckley Township as it pertains to water infrastructure for Town Center. I am not. I am not ready. And are, are there any rationale or further discussion? I think without any kind of clear information on what return on that investment would be, it, it's it's like, well, you, you got to make the bet before you know what you get out of it. Well, you're not signing any loan documents. And she said that there's no. No, I understand that. But it's, it's eighty five hundred dollars up front with no guarantee for any return on that. And that's the same thing that we have done in the past with the fire department. But that notwithstanding, even if you get grant money. We're looking at assessing people who may not want to sign off on that and won't. That, I think you have to do that first. There has to be some kind of consensus for the people who will receive this and be assessed by it, that they're willing to move forward with that. So what I'm hearing is that we won't explore it at all I'm not saying we won't explore it. I'm saying I, I don't want to spend $8,500 with a consultant who has given giving us no guarantee in it. No, no diss on you. I understand that. That's your job. She can't you can't guarantee, guarantee she anything. Can't guarantee it. But with the realization that this township will not be the recipient of disadvantaged entities. We're not in that same classification by no way, shape, or form. We don't know what our water quality is. We have failing septic systems. We have folks who are experiencing hardship and we won't be exploring this because we are in fear of the future instead of looking at doing our due diligence and seeing what grant opportunities are available. I would like to see some kind of information on how many people in this township are willing to be assessed. 
we you gave us this information at the last meeting and said I did not expect conversation on it. We would discuss it moving forward. I had asked for it electronically. I did not get it. And then we I just found out when I saw the agenda yesterday that you'd be joining us today. Thank you. That was a long drive for you to come out here, but I feel very unprepared for it. So I'm not I'm not ready to make a decision on this right now. So you okay. Because you've had this information for two weeks. And, and there's been no discussion about it. You okay. gave it to us at the last meeting. I asked for it electronically I so that, that I, I could so that I could review it. And well, we've you had, had no it, discussion about it. it. You had a physical copy. So whether you get it electronically or not, you still had the opportunity to review it. That's I fine. Was, I was waiting for the electronic copy. I thank you so. very much, Jennifer, for your time and your talent. Um, and I apologize to the folks in Hinkley that um, that are experiencing hardship. We won't be exploring this opportunity. That's all I have. Trustee Ashrell. Um, I would just like to announce that the public information session on internet and phone scams um, that we had discussed a couple of weeks ago, um, it was originally we had said for this weekend, I had copied both of you on it, um, that we had to move it to March 25th at 9 a.m. in town hall. So it just got moved by two weeks. It is posted on the website and I also did post about it on social media. So I just wanted to publicly state in a meeting that the date has been moved to March 25th at 9 a.m. Um, I did want to discuss the water extension um, since Melissa had sent that out at the last meeting on um, that information. I apologize that I am just giving this to you right now. I just got the final copy of this um, this afternoon. I have been talking to Jeremy Simcoe, the Medina County Sanitary Engineer. As a reminder, that is who we had come out to the meeting in November to talk to us about our water options. Um, you know, it's occurred to me that we're already moving forward, looking at grants, looking at different opportunities, and we have not done what we said we were initially going to do. We initially said in November that we were going to send a letter out to see, is there a letter of interest? So what I did is I worked with Jeremy. He just sent me the final edits this afternoon. So that's why we are just now getting this. For the proposed letter to send out to the people that would be impacted by um, the water extension. And I thought I would just read it since we have um, a lot of people in the audience tonight. The letter that Jeremy and I uh, came up with, and this is just a draft. Well, it's a, it's a, it's a, the letter he said he was going to provide for us. He did not say he would provide it for us. That was not determined who would provide it for us. I he, went back and watched the meeting yesterday. He has a draft and that he uses. It's a, it's a, he cannot send out the letter because the county correct, commissioners have not agreed to it. He has a draft that he uses. We've used this before. Go on. I, I'm aware of that. I've been speaking with him frequently over the last couple of weeks. So this is the letter that Jeremy and I drafted together based off of um, the normal letter that they send out, but it did have to be tweaked to our township because this is not coming from the commissioners. This is coming from the township. That was the understanding. So Jeremy, the right. letter reads, dear property owner, our board was recently approached by some members of the community requesting information on the possibility of extending an existing water main to service properties near and at the intersection of Ridge Road and Center Road. Recently, the Medina County Sanitary Engineer addressed the Board of Trustees discussing three different options to extend water. He explained that this project is not on the County Commissioner's 10-year plan. He agreed to bring this request to the County Commissioners if there was an overwhelming response from residents in favor of extending water as an assessed project, meaning the owner would be responsible for the costs associated with extending the water main. If the county commissioners agreed to move forward with this project as an assessed project, 
there will be considerable cost to each property owner. As an example, option A is approximately $2 million project. Spread over the estimated 65 parcels, each parcel would be responsible for an estimated cost of $32,000, which would be placed on the property tax over 20 years. There will be an additional expense to tie in and run water to your home or business. An approximate cost range will be between $10,000 and $20,000, depending on the length and difficulty to install the service connection. Please note, these are estimates based on the current parcels and the cost from the sanitary engineer. The intent of this letter is to ascertain whether other neighboring property owners are also interested in water main extension. Please complete the attached document and you may either email your response to info at hinkleytwp.org or mail the response to 1410 Ridge Road, Hinkley, Ohio 44233. If you have any questions regarding this inquiry, please contact Monique Asherall. 330-416-8971. Failure to respond to this letter will be considered a no to the request. That is what Jeremy and I drafted together. And do you have any initial thoughts on this? I just thought that I should provide the solution because this is something that we said we would do in November and nothing has been done with it. I think that's what I was commenting earlier. I think it'd be a good idea to send this out and see who is interested, who would be willing to say, yeah, I'm, I'm willing to drop thirty to $50,000 if I get water. Well, I don't necessarily understand why we can't do both at the same time and work collectively so we could say to them, but we're applying for grants and looking into opportunities. To let's, let's, because process. let's say that we get a, a We didn't 20 get this electronically, but we got it two weeks ago. And then this one, I didn't get electronically, but I got it today. Why can't we just merge them together and work together? I am more than happy to forward this to you electronically. I, electronically. I did just receive it today. I just think it's interesting that the way this is being handled, you know, there's a million complaints about a, a submittal that you got two weeks ago in person, a, a beautiful copy, and you didn't have enough time to look at it. And now there's a letter in front of me that would correspond with the consultant. It would be the perfect way to broach both things. Well, I think that first we need to send this out to see what percentage of interest there is. I did ask Jeremy, they just changed um, their, their system and at the county level. So he could not provide to me the list of addresses that this letter would go to, um, hoping that we can get that within the next couple of days. He also could not provide the list to me of people that have petitioned the county since he came to the township in November. However, he said he believes the number is zero of people who have reached out to the county asking for water since November. But he can't they, actually pull that report. They were waiting on the letter, which we discussed in that meeting, which is this letter in front of us today. Well, let's send it out. Let's send it out then. Can you fix some of the spelling errors in it? Can we at least mention the fact that we are going to attempt to go after some grant funding to assist these business and homeowners? I just feel like what you're giving them is extremely daunting. Like the township's not supporting them at all. We just want to know yes or no. Well, guess what? The township may want to assist them. There are tax dollars and grant funding available. Why wouldn't we at least endeavor to, to go after it? Because I think first we need to see what the interest is. But nobody's going to be interested in that price. No, exactly. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, we at least, I, I, I got a little bit so it doesn't impact me directly, but if I got that letter, I'd say 30K, hell no. If I didn't know that there was other opportunities. I, well, I, I mean, you could, you could certainly say if some grant funding becomes yeah. available, yeah, yeah, yeah. this right. number could come down, but there is no guarantee. Totally. Yeah. Because I don't want somebody thinking that I'm telling them, we're going to get some grant money. It's not going to be that much. I agree. I agree. I'm just saying that I think we have to offer, not offer, but at least acknowledge that there is other opportunities for funding. 
I don't disagree right. with that. Yeah. Well, and I that we're and that we're exploring them. We're having conversations yeah. about them. I think that's important to know. If I just read that, and could you please come up oh, to the podium because Martha yeah. is taking minutes from. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure she can hear me at home. <laughs> Tom Schrader, two one eight Walden Ridge. My point was that I think that if we're going to send a letter, if I received a letter that said, "Hey, it's thirty grand." Paid over 20 years, by the way, you said, right? Tax assessment, I think, was the number. Or they can pay it outright. Yeah, of course, yeah. Um, but if it was, if I knew that there was maybe a chance that it was not that much, I think it, the way the, it, the letter is written there, there's no discussion about anything other than that, mm -hmm. right? And again, Jack, to your point, you, you certainly couldn't say, hey, there's a guarantee, you know, in fact, that number can't even be a guarantee because we don't know that that was an estimate. It's, no, right. He has in there several times that this is an approximate. Yeah, yeah, I get that. No, no, I, I heard that. I'm just saying, I think it's important that that is driven mm -hmm. to the reader, right? That mm -hmm. it maybe could go as high as type of thing, right? We do it all the time and not to exceed kind of number. I'm not saying we'd guarantee that either. I'm just saying that we should right, make. Yeah, and would yeah. He, he shied away from because yep. these were numbers based off of September, sure. which we're just going off of the September numbers. Yeah, yeah. They've gone up even more. Well, we just had a business owner drill, drill a brand new well, $15,000. If you could get grant funding and reduce this $32,000 in half, that's the same price. No, for well. new, for new, it would make sense. Yeah. But if you're existing, that's the, that's where the problem comes in. I think the problem comes in, in that we, we need to communicate to our residents and business owners what we're actually doing here. It's not just a yes or no. It's the township is looking into it. We are doing our due diligence. We're exploring other opportunities. And to Tom's point, and as I said earlier, this number is daunting. I would say no. Mm -hmm. If I didn't know the township was looking into ways that they could help afford this. I, I, one more thing. I don't, and I'll take my seat. I don't know if this is to you, to you guys, or perhaps uh, Ms. Brown, is is her is the consultation fee? Could that be covered by those existing ARPA funds? We have a, a, about I don't know a little over eight hundred thousand dollars that could be utilized. Yeah, but, but, I'm, but I'm specifically, are consultation fees allowed under the ARPA we rules? Decided, Do you know? We decided or, that the ARPA funds would be utilized for roads. So what we've done is taken the road budget, the funds that we took from ARPA and put into the road budget. We've taken that road budget, $800,000 or whatever odd number it is, and just put it into an account that yes, it could be pulled from this. Understood. And I recall that transaction. I'm just wondering, are, are consultation fees in general allowed to be authorized under ARPA they funds? They are, but our ARPA funds, because of the timeline that we have to utilize them by, we've already designated them. So when our road bids come in, the first thing we're gonna do is make a resolution to utilize those funds so that we are well within the timeline. We wouldn't be using ARPA funds for this. Right, this is not an ARPA fund project at this point. It's the funds that we were going to have for ARPA. And that also goes back to the conversations that we had in the fall of everyone making a wish list so that yeah, yeah. It's not, we're not just piddling away. Yeah, yeah, you know, no, 10, I got 10,000 here, 10,000 yeah. there. We wanna be able to have something to show for that yeah, money at gotcha. the end of the day. And then one last question, I think, uh, Ms. Brown, I, I think I understood you correctly, that assuming a municipality engages with your firm as a consulting firm, there's no other commitment to cash until there's some um, direction from the either grant provider or loan provider. That's correct. Okay, thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. <clears throat> Police showing 1307 Skyland Falls Boulevard. Um, I do have just a question about the very last statement about a no response being down as a no. I don't find that as appropriate. I think a no response is just a no response and shouldn't be weighed yes or no uh, negatively or affirmatively for it. That's so, how the county does it. And, I, and I understand. What, and that's what his point is. If we get an <clears throat> overwhelming response, mm -hmm. he will bring this to the county commissioners if we get an overwhelming response. So that is how the county does it. If it's a no response, it is listed as a no. But you just this is for him to take to the letter. commission. No, I understand. But if somebody doesn't respond to the letter, that's not a response. Right. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's not, not a no, it's not a yes. It's, it's neither. It's a Hinkley Township letter. 
it's a Hinckley Township letter that we are going to be sending to the county, to the county sanitary engineer, so that he can bring this to the county. Well, he's bringing the results back to them, correct? He's, he's bringing, yes, the, the results right. of this. So but you're, we're going to send this to the people impacted by this. No, I understand. But let's say have, they're out of town for six weeks and they don't get to the letter mm -hmm. um, and they wanted it or they didn't want it, their vote should be should, to petition as well you know not right. not to fill out this well, that, form but where, where to does that say that send here? the petition let's put that in the letter i think that's a fantastic idea that's why i wanted to share this with you and i would be more than happy to share it with everybody virtually also so that we can add in our thoughts of what is missing which is why i preface this by saying this was the a draft. draft yeah okay i just wanted to thank you thank you I agree. Thank you, Paul. Any other discussion on this? Just to your point, I think that would be just a precautionary because we would provide them with the number of people we sent it to and the responses we got. So what they're going to do, they're going to discount. It's not us discounting it. They're going to say, well, you only gave us this many positive responses and the rest right. are considered a no. Yeah, it's like just doing a tally. Right. And say, yeah. Yes, no, and none. Because, it's the, the, most, because the commissioner the has to gauge, the commissioner, the board of commissioners has to gauge wh who wants to participate in this, whether it has value as a project or not. And then not even talking that them paying for it, they're going to assess the township for it. It's whether or not they want to divert resources to doing this. Right. Oh, I understand all that. I'm just I'm trying to make the point that right. if someone doesn't <coughs> submit a response, you can't really say it's a no, that they're not interested. I agree. It's well, if we, if we ask 300 people and only 15 say yes, the, com the county is going to say they have, what's that, seven and a half percent response saying yes. That's what they're going to say. And the rest is considered a no. Okay. I, I understand. I understand yeah. what you're saying, and yeah. I understand your point. I think um, those are probably one-offs of people who are, you know, out of town right. for that amount well, of time. I mean, I so I, I understand. I understand what you're saying, and I think it's valid. I just think it's more of a one-off situation, and trying to go by the standards that the county does, since this is we're asking the county right. to fund this. Well, I don't know that we're asking the county to fund this. I think that we're looking into other opportunities. And I was waiting for Jeremy to send this letter as we discussed in that meeting and got the email from the resident. <clears throat> so I kind of went that direction while I was waiting to garner the letter and at least looked into the consultant, which I think would be a great addition to this process. Yeah, I just reached out to Jeremy because I did uh, review that meeting and it was not that he said he was going to send something. He said possibly send something from the county and the township. So well, he was I reached out to him. To us, I decided to just be proactive with it and reach out to him and try and let this board do what we said we were going to do. So here we are. That's fantastic. We have a way to move forward. Very good. Next. All right. Uh, the other thing I wanted to talk about was um, procedure for written correspondence from the board. Um, moving forward, I feel that any written correspondence from the trustees in an official capacity needs to be approved by the board. Jack, I know you had mentioned something similar to this last year. Uh, the trustee corner is intended to communicate to residents news issues, community events. It's not meant to be a political platform. If you wish to campaign, I think that you should pay for an advertisement. We are a board and we are a single voice to the community. The only time that we are a separate voice is when we are deliberating on something or voting on something. Any information that we provide to our residents need to be the voice of the entire board. And also, um, based on this last uh, trustee corner, we have discussed this 
many times and agreed to this many times now that in the past, when we are encouraging residents to reach out to the trustees, we are not telling them to reach out to just one. We are asking them to reach out to all three trustees. And that's something that has been previously agreed to multiple times. Any thoughts or discussion on that? So I didn't follow protocol and procedure in my trustee corner clearly. Um, well, there is no protocol. That's why I'm well, bringing this up. It's just, you know, we, we all work individually. We run different departments, but we work collectively as well. So we're supposed to garner a letter like this and draft it up and make a decision collectively before we can write a trustee corner or before we can make a decision. I mean, we've got, you both had conversation with Bethany from economic, economic development about the annexation. I didn't have conversation with her. Did I say you should have had, we should have had it as a board. That's just an example. We work separately in the time allotted in a part-time position that's as a separate community issue. members. That, that's it, a separate it, thing. It's, it's a separate issue, but we're all doing our due diligence in our own way. You reached out to Jeremy. Everyone does things their own way. So I understand what you're saying that we are collectively a board and we need to work together. I think that's fabulous. I've been doing it. This is my fifth year doing it. Um, but we also work separately. And the joy of that is that each one of us bring a different perspective to this board when we work on our own. I, we, I agree. we bring different ex expertise and different experience. And so you might see something totally different than me. You may have a, a strength I don't have. I may have a strength you don't have. That's the benefit. So when we're talking about what we're doing collectively, I, I think we just need to outline what that is. If you don't want to do the trustee corner anymore, then say, yeah, I don't want to do the trustee corner anymore. No, it's not but what I'm I saying. think that we all do things on our own. Phone calls are made to different people at different times. I talked, you, you said at one of the meetings, you talked to the prosecutor Absolutely. for an hour on annexation. So did I. Absolutely. I mean, that's that's why That's why we have these meetings so that we can come together so what is and written, have these conversations. What is the What procedure? I am saying, what I am saying is when we are communicating to the public in written documentation, like the trustee corner, I it is one voice. It is coming from the board of trustees. Then it should come from the board of trustees. It should be written collectively. It should be removed, reviewed at a work session or a board meeting. Because right now, if it says trustee Monique Gastrell, it's coming from trustee Monique Gastrell with her picture. If it says trustee Melissa Augustine, it's coming from trustee Melissa Augustine with her picture. And if you don't like it that way, then it should come like a newsletter from the commissioners with all their pictures at the top and it should be written collectively and reviewed collectively. I agree. I don't know when it stops having a, a picture, but it does not it's say. Never it has been a board of trustees, trustee corner. It has, I started it, has it in 2017 been. with Dave Sambord. It, Ray Schulte, Dave Sambor, and I each like to weigh in on? did our own. So if you want to make it a board. I weighed in on this back in the early part of last year. I think that the trustee corner should go away and any information that you want to post about current status of whatever on the township website. That's why we have the township website. That's what I'm asking. So we're going to get rid of it collectively. I don't see it as a platform for an agenda or politics. I see it as a way to talk to the people that I didn't get to talk to that month. Your, your last trustee corner was very politically charged, Melissa. I, I it, was, it was, it uh, was a strategy that you suggested in September to avoid annexation, exactly. Jack's point in June, when we initially voted on it and you voted against the 50% abatement, mm -hmm. and so did I. I did. That was Jack's point in June. It was, I. If, if you both think that we should do away with the trustee corner, I've said it multiple times, sitting at this table, I believe in the process and the majority rules. I would not be for abandoning the trustee corner. I if think that retain, a lot of people- If you want to retain it as a board of trustees, 
Were you both something like what, that? Yes. And I'm, I think I'm okay that it with needs that, to be I, this, the, the approved. individual one, I don't, I think it needs to go away. I agree. So I would like to make a motion that all written communication in the Hinkley record or newsletter is approved by the board prior to being submitted. I do not agree to that because we all get interviewed separately. So that's a written communication. Those are, that is news articles. Responses. That is news articles. It, that is you don't not need something a motion that we to stop are the authoring. Corner. There was no motion that to make the trustee That is something we author the trustee you, corner. The news do not. Is there a second or is there no second? I don't understand is the motion. A motion for the trustee corner? I would make a motion that all written communication in the Hinkley record that we're writing, that we are authoring, that comes or the from, newsletter that comes from the trustees, from the trustees. is approved by the board prior to being submitted. Well, I sent the newsletter to all of you and nobody said anything. And you saw my trustee corner before it went out. We saw it two days before I it went it on out. Friday, it, was, it went out on it Wednesday. It was already submit. There was nothing that we could do about it if at that point. If you had a problem with it, you could have told me. I wouldn't have changed it in the newsletter. Well, that's actually not accurate because that is what happened last year when Jack originally objected to this. I didn't agree with Jack. And we Okay, so you wouldn't agree with us if we said we don't agree we with don't this. Have to agree so I would like to make a motion that all written communication in the Hinkley record or newsletter authored by the trustees is approved by the board prior to being submitted. Second. Moved by Asheville. Seconded by Swedek. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Trustee Augustine? Opposed. No. Motion passes. I will reach out to um, script type tomorrow There's to no ensure that we can, uh, you know, there will be some times that we will miss that 15th. Uh, Jack, would you like to start participating in the trustee corner again? It won't be the trustee corner. It would be the board of trustee corner, wouldn't it? No, I, I think, think it, says it trustees. can still say trustees corner. It says trustee corner. It says trustees. There's an S. It's plural. <laughs> what I can like I said, I've been writing it for five would years. Would you like so. to? If I have something to add, I will. Okay. Um, so you're gonna be making a decision about this publicly or via email? Because now you've made it so that we have to have conversation about every single thing that's written right here in this meeting. So what's the point of writing it? It's I have, right here in I the have meeting. Not, I have not said that. Yes, you have everything that's written from us. That's, Melissa, you mentioned at the last meeting that this board needs to do a better read, job of communicating. Can you read the motion to me again? So I would like to remind you that the largest part of communication is actually listening. And that is not what I said. Can you please read the motion to me again? I would like to make a motion that all written communication in the Hinkley record authored by trustees or the newsletter is approved by the board prior to being submit. So it's something that you can write your draft. Whoever's doing it for that month can write the draft and the second meeting of um, the month, it can be discussed at the public meeting if anything needs to be added or omitted. Anything else? That is all I have. Okay, I would uh, like to make a motion to renew the portable latrine rental agreement with United Rentals for 2023. Second. Moved by Swedek, seconded by Augustine. All in favor? Aye. 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 I mean, we've been texting the whole meeting. I have a move to pay the Medina County Commissioner's Office $750 for the 2023 annual EPA stormwater program fee. Second. 
Moved by Swedek, seconded by Ashrell. All in favor? Aye. Are we Aye. gonna mention the amount? I did, $750. Aye. We do the road agreement. And then because I have entertained about a half a dozen calls about the annexation and what occurred where, when I have a sequence of events here, I'm gonna read into the record. In May of 2022, Drug Mart submitted a request to receive the 50% tax abatement available through the CRA zone in the area that includes their subject property on the Southwest corner of Route 303 and West 130th. On May 24, 2022, Medina County Economic Development Corporation Executive Director Bethany Dentler provided the board with the details of the request and the CRA information. On June 7, 2022, Ms. Dentler again attended a meeting of the board to answer any questions relative to the request before the board voted on the matter. After the discussion, the board voted two to one against granting the request. On July 12, 2022, Ms. Dentler attended another board meeting at the request of the board to discuss the options available regarding restructuring the CRA parameters. On September 6, 2022, Trustee Ashwell presented the board an option for restructuring the CRA. On September 2022, the board voted two to one to keep the CRA as is. On October 4, 2022, Trustee Ashrell informed the board that Ms. Dentler had been notified of the board's decision regarding the CRA. On October 18, 2022, Trustee Ashrell informed the board that Ms. Dentler had advised that she had not yet heard anything back from Drug Mart and would not likely hear anything until late winter or early spring. On February 7, 2023, the board received notification that an annexation petition had been filed with Medina County for the subject property. Subsequent to that date, um, the township has enlisted legal counsel to file an objection. So if you want a copy of that, I have it for you. If you'd like it for your own records. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Would you like one? Sure. Rod. I like to make a uh, move to pay the bills in the amount of one hundred ninety thousand one hundred forty dollars and ninety five cents. Second. Moved by Swedek, seconded by Ashrill. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anything else from the board? No. Anything from the public? Cindy, good evening. Cindy Engelman, Ridge Road. So speaking of the trustees corner, um, I have some questions. And this is regarding the, uh, the petition that to annex. So as was mentioned, there was a two to one vote back in June, um, not supporting the 50% CRA. So I was wondering, um, Trustee Augustine in particular, because yours was a deciding vote, <clears throat> why you had voted no back in June of last year, not to support the 50% CRA. I agreed with Trustee Ashville at the time. I felt that the corner was a highly sought after corner and that we had multiple businesses that were interested in it that weren't asking for a CRA. I've been in this position for five years. I was appointed in 2017 and came back and won in 2019. So I've been here since the beginning of 2020. I've watched many different businesses have interaction at that corner and I didn't feel it was necessary at the time. And if you recall, because you come to most of the meetings, I went back and did my due diligence and had conversations with folks all over the county and said that I had a change of heart in the meeting minutes. I've read it publicly at the last two meetings. I believe my objection. Oh, wait, wait. Oh, well, okay. I believe I objected um, because I said I thought that uh, tax abatements were, in my opinion, 
uh, meant for more small mom and pop um, type of businesses, which is why I had created that new scale that I presented to the board because I wanted to see it be something uh, more open to the mom and pops. And, and I agreed I believe, with you. Right, so it's not that I disagreed with tax abatements in general, it was, I thought they should go towards the mom and pop. Okay, well, I was just, I was curious why the no vote? And now I'm hearing, um, you know, cause I went back to the minutes mm -hmm. and now I'm hearing that there were other businesses that were interested. Now I'm curious what other businesses were interested in that corner? Well, there was Suburban, there was Tire Max. There were multiple businesses that had showed interest in that corner. So there was a senior housing project that was interested in that corner. There were multiple businesses. But we're, talk we're talking about the, the corner. Yes, ma'am. Right in the that. corner where Buzzards Cove is. So senior housing is not that corner. Yeah. Tire Max was, had made application and that was, um, that has its history and that did not occur. Um, there were multiple so I'm just wondering though, if that's projects that came forward before that one. Okay, so that's why you voted no though in June to not support the CRA for drug mark. It was because I agreed with Trustee Asheville. I said that publicly and because it was a highly sought after corner and I didn't feel that it was necessary to give a CRA to drug mark at that corner when we had multiple businesses that had come in and showed interest in the corner and hadn't asked for anything. Tire Max was actually- in Right, the so that's the key. The business needs to request Tire the CRA. The, the businesses need to come in and request that. If they don't come in and request that, then that's not the township's onus to tell them about it. It's it's a business decision. Drug Mart has made a business decision. They requested to receive that 50% mm -hmm. or whatever um, abatement that you know is out there and that that zone is, that corner property is in that post 94 zone. So my question was very simple. I just wanted to understand why you voted no, because um, there really wasn't a lot of discussion. Yes, I remember you said you trust, you um, agreed with Trustee Asheville, but now I'm hearing two different reasons. This is mom and pop and, and suburban and tire max. I wouldn't consider those mom and pop shops. I mean, I would look at Drug Mart, which is a Medina County homegrown kind of um, corporation employee own to have maybe more roots, but I'm just trying to understand why you said no. And that's- For those two reasons. I look at all different perspectives. Okay, so then why did in September, you agree to support the 50% CRA for drug market? I had a change of heart and I realized that annexation was a threat and I had conversation with our auditor, Medina County auditor, as well as other folks in Medina County, including Grant Angst, who's the economic developer for, Medina, or for Brunswick. I had conversations with many people who said, it's probably a better move that you just move forward with it. But then again, annexation was a threat back in June. I believe That's Trustee true. Swedek had brought that up. Trustees are just like you. We are community members. Well, except that you're making decisions for the community. Understood. So I've had a lot of feedback from community members and other folks in Medina County that said I would support the CRA. And so I came back and said I had a change of heart. I'm allowed to do that. That's why I supported the 50% on the second vote. Okay. So then why in the trustee corner, you don't say it. You say you made this proposal to make the township more competitive with Brunswick, but you said it at the September meeting that you would do 100%. I said that if we were to be strategic and if we really were worried about annexation, the best strategy would be to match Brunswick's CRA at 100%. We had no ability to do that at that juncture, but that's what I would have recommended. But just last month, you said that that's the strategy that's what we should have done, what you should have done as a board, but you didn't even really have the authority to do that because that CRA is capped at 50%. Correct. And that is not a the township offering that abatement. Correct. It's the county offers that abatement and they were simply looking for a letter of support from the township to say, 
Yes, in Drug Mart's application for the CRA, we'd like to know whether the township supports this. Correct. And I said publicly that I had a change of heart. And I thought that our liaison was going to go back to Medina County Economic Development and tell Drug Mart that there was a change of heart. And I supported uh, But that, that doesn't, it doesn't matter whether one individual person has a change of heart. The vote, okay, so the vote. Conversation with you after this, because this is a long- The, the vote, well, I'm, I'm, excuse me, but I'm, I'm a citizen here. I understand that completely. And I'm concerned about how this came about. When in May, June of 2022, there's a vote saying no. And then in September, there's a vote saying yes. And then in the middle of that saying, well, really, um, like a hundred percent. And then when I go back and look at the fact that in 2017, <clears throat> you were one of the two trustees that night who voted to rezone that corner from residential to general business. Mm -hmm. And a drug mart is a general business type of yep. company and they're coming in. So you make a decision 17 Yep. You have to understand that the consequences of that decision, you want to bring it up. the consequences of the decision are that a business may come in and apply mm -hmm. for the CRA. Correct. And then you say, well, yeah, I know we zoned this business, but we don't really want anybody to come in here and benefit from the CRA that was put in place back, you know, years before that. In 2017, I voted for the rezoning because it went along with a comprehensive plan, plain and simple. That's where people wanted business. It was that corner. They didn't want it anywhere else. I don't know that it was that. part of the uh, comprehensive it plan. Was there, the there was there was some discussion as to whether that was... No discussion at that meeting. We just voted. And okay. I just told you what happened with June to September. I don't feel it's necessary to repeat it a third time. Okay, so we uh, take a vote. All right, the way I see it, you know, we take a vote. A couple months later, then we do our due diligence, change our vote, which which your which is understandable. But you said, I remember that September meeting. I spent three weeks, you know, my doing my due diligence. So for me, I question where was the due diligence back in the June vote. I was listening to residents as well. That was the most important variable. Well, we have lo a locally based top 10 company. And after that June vote, if I was that company, I would have heard no. And I would have started thinking, where else shall I go? Understood. And so the consequence is that, you know, we've got um, in Bethany's report, 33 full-time employees representing $1.1 million in new payroll, um, which if the, um, the CRA was supported and moved forward, they would be without income tax for those employees. Um, you know, a $7. million investment here in the township. And um, I know I, I, I'm quite familiar with it. So, so the damage is done. I mean, you know, I mean, I hope that in April we are successful in being able to turn around the damage that has occurred last year. I really am. Well, I, I'll be honest with you. I'm not sure about our legal counsel who has no experience in Medina County. Well, I don't know if that's an appropriate comment considering he's your legal counsel, but I did, I did check out the legal counsel um, website and I'd say that individual appears to be extremely experienced. Very experienced. So, Just didn't know that the property owner was the one that applied for annexation right here before executive session. We didn't see his resume when we hired him. I, I have no knowledge of him until after we've hired well, him. Well, you know, okay. I mean, I thought the purpose of your executive session was to interview that person to get a feel for what his qualifications are. Hired. And I don't know that um, you had already signed a contract with him before you had your executive session. You said he was already hired. I wouldn't expect him necessarily to have all the details of whatever it is that you're going to retain him for without you first discussing with him his qualifications and why you want to retain him. That was discussed publicly in the meeting. Uh, I said I wanted to see his resume. We didn't have access. Well, I checked his website and I saw his resume there. So thank you. But I didn't know his name until the meeting. 
Nobody knew his name until the meeting. Right. I, I was on the phone with him walking in to the that meeting. And to your point, because I had said this at the meeting prior to this, I said, I feel I need to start contacting people because we need to get moving on this. Right. We cannot wait. So at the last meeting two weeks ago, you were saying, we have to get going on this. We can't wait. So we did that and we hired the attorney. We had made a decision, the, the meeting before the last meeting that we were going to look at legal counsel options. You were going to specifically look into legal counsel yes. options two meetings ago. Yes. And then this last meeting is Correct. when I presented the information. I You were on the phone with I, I, as you came in, as you said. That's so right. I don't understand your point. There's no point. I, it seems like there's not. Please forgive me if I am missing the point. I, I don't understand where you're going with this. I, again, did everything that I said I was going to do which is also the purpose of this letter about the water. It is doing, it is following through and doing what we say we're going to do for the community that we serve. So I don't know what the point is and how, how disrespectful to say that about the attorney who we just hired. Is there anything else from the public? <laughs> yes, ma'am. I just said I, I, what it what is funny about this, Melissa? I think jaws are dropping in this room. You're you're giggling about this. I, I don't understand where the humor is here. Can you enlighten me? Am I missing I'm an inside joke? The chairman's been on his phone the whole night. I, I just texting the whole time. Did you have uh, the chairman you? hasn't been texting the whole evening? I have some information on here that I was reading. I had a motion on here. I had the dollar amount. Whoa. Excuse me. Anything else from the public? Ma'am. With all due respect, I just wanted to offer up whether you utilize my services or not to um, recognize there's an organization, um, Small Community Environmental Infrastructure Group, SCAG is the acronym, S-C-E-I-G. It is actually housed on the Ohio Water Development Authority's website. Um, you can explore with that organization your options for funding without utilizing my services at all. I offer that up that um, as you are obviously weighing the decision um, to, to consider this, you, they're a resource. So I just offer that up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. Um, please. Can you? Lisa Prati Blotus, 635 Stony Hill Road. Um, I live right across the street from the new Stony Hill Road Development Legacy Builders. I don't, are you guys familiar with that? Okay, it's one street, it's a cul-de-sac. And I just found out, I was having a great birthday last Wednesday until the surveyors were out. They are putting the street right aligned with my picture window. And I have a small house if they could possibly just move it a little. I did have Tom Wilson came out last week. I'm waiting to hear back from him. Um, I did have, we have our own project going on and I had somebody from Medina come out, came out and they told me to talk to the highway engineers and I put a phone call into them. Do I have anything else I can do for this? The highway engineers is the best option for you. It's a county entity. It's already gone through the Medina County Planning Commission and it's been approved. And the highway engineers put their insight into that as well as many other Medina County entities. Um, so I don't know that we as a township can help you. I would think that the county engineer is- So that's friend. the best bet. So yeah. just keep on them till they- Yeah. Okay. And Thank. I think that it's been approved there. And I think our zoning commission approved the preliminary as well. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Happy birthday. Thank you. One last thing, sir. Tom Schrader again. Jack, I appreciate the timeline you laid out earlier on the annexation thing. Just curious where are we actually at? It's with council right now. So he's, okay. he's working up an objection. The hearing's April 11. 
and we'll have something prepared for that time. Okay. Well, the uh, I know that in a previous meeting there was a discussion to not that, mention too much publicly to tip our hand, so to speak. Um, just out of curiosity, was his position that the objection would be, um, I don't want to say looked upon favorably, but based in previous successes? Nothing we'll discuss right now, but thank you. Okay, fair, thanks. Anybody else? Thank you very much. At this time, I'll make a motion to adjourn at 8.34 p.m. Second. Moved by Swedek, second by Asheville. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, everyone.